Hello, so I wanted to uh, do another Friday Business of Geospatial talk. It's been a couple of weeks since I've had an opportunity to do this, so a little bit of catch up. Focus today is actually on startups. So let's move our slides forward. So I wanted just to talk very quickly about, and I live a lot in the startups world when it comes to sort of Geospatial 2.0. So those in the startup world are, are organizations who would call themselves, well, their focus is on location intelligence, it might be on geospatial, um, it might be on space, that's satellites, that's earth orbiting stuff. Um, it might be on earth observation, that's not just satellites, that's obviously observing the earth from different levels. Um, it might be on artificial intelligence and machine learning. But the, the, the data that we're talking about here is fundamentally location based data. So whatever the category that uh, the company would uh, promote itself as, um, it's really fundamentally the same base. So when you look inside of companies, small companies, large companies as well, but the smaller guys, you can break things down into sort of multiple groups. So you've got the sales group, you've got the technologists um, and the product guys, very important three groups within a company. You've then got the operations people, the key people keep things running, the people interfacing with the customers. And then lastly, you've got the marketing piece. So I was gonna talk a little bit more about the marketing piece and the experiment we, we ran around sort of the sales and marketing area, but with more focus in the marketing space. So this is the experiment. We wanted to actually see using, and I'll use a couple of terms here in marketing, in marketing speak, there's content marketing and there's digital marketing. So we're actually gonna run a digital marketing campaign focused on, or sorry, I'm gonna talk about three campaigns that we ran focused on lead generation. So three, three marketing campaigns. Um, and really what we're gonna talk about here is, is the results of those campaigns. So just to give you, a, and again, there's, there's lots of definitions about what is digital marketing, what is content marketing. Content marketing is generally associated with SEO. So, you know, you put keywords in there, you hope you find, get found in organic searches, you know, you write articles, etc. It's that more, it's, content marketing has been around for a long time. Digital marketing is, is, is really, content marketing fits under the digital marketing umbrella. Digital marketing is any form of marketing you do digitally. So it could be video, it could be, um, podcasts, it could be the whole lot. So I think there's a gray area between the, what the two are, but I think in this case, we'd really define this as a digital marketing campaign. So what does that campaign look like? We generally run, we generally start with, with articles and I've done, I've spoken about this in other videos I've spoke, I, I've done, but we generally write an SEO based article, generally under a thousand words. I, I usually like things that are 700 words or less, 800 words or less. You lose people's attention when it gets too long. I've read lots of things about how long a blog post or an article should be. Some can get away with being really long, but more often than not with such short attention spans, you've got to get in, you've got to be punchy, you've got to get people's attention, curiosity, interest, those classic things. Um, so we also, as part of this campaign, is we follow up with social media marketing, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So we start with the article, and then we do a bunch of SEO, sorry, social marketing type marketing. But the critical thing that we do is we measure this really carefully. It's no good just doing all these things without measuring. So any digital marketing campaign, one has to measure. And again, we'll talk about the importance of that uh, in a moment. So I'm gonna throw at you a lot of data now. So bear with me, I'll do it one line at a time. So we ran three campaigns. One of them was an iterative campaign. That is that we ran a campaign we, we measured it, we learned from it, we repeated the campaign. So we did things which were different in each of the steps, what we learned from the first step. An example would be, we saw that a title was particularly, it, it didn't work very well, let's, let's go there. So we changed the focus of the title, we changed the wording in the title to grab people's attention. We, chose, we also made subtle changes to the topic we were talking about, just to see what worked and what didn't work. So we did a lot of subtle things. We changed the, the call to action that was embedded in the article. Lots of things in the iterative campaign. That's the first campaign. The two campaigns after that were one-off campaigns. Different focuses, different emphasis, but they were just one-off. We didn't have anything to learn. We just threw it out there and see what the results were. So the way we did it is we wrote the article or we wrote an article with an embedded call to action we published that on our blog or we published it on a blog in, in the first case it was on our blog 
Um, and then we posted it on, in this case, LinkedIn. We did it in Twitter as well, but we pushed it onto LinkedIn. So that first line there is talking about how many views we got from the from LinkedIn. So when you go to LinkedIn, you can you can generally see how many views there are. So the article that the so you've got three numbers there, 1442. That was the iterative campaign that we ran, and we got 1442 views from that. That's a good number. When we the different things that we've run within LinkedIn. When you go above a thousand, you'll begin. That, that really tells you you're getting interest. So it is really an, it, that number really gives you a sense of what interest levels you're generating. The second, the, the first one-off campaign got 1390. Again, it was a good number of people coming to it. That told us that we were we had a good title, we had a good topic we were talking about. There was real interest there. The third, uh, the second um, campaign, the uh, one-off campaign that we ran had fewer. There were 500 views of that uh, of that post in LinkedIn. So that told us not a bad number, but we maybe didn't hit the mark when it came to what the topic was, the title, etc. Those subtle things, the, the, those subtle things that drive people to want to read uh, uh, what uh, you've got there. So that was the first measure. As part of our social media campaign, we then did some follow up. So instead of just pushing the article out and being done with it, we sort of did some reminders to folks um, about the article and we, we, we created an image for each of the each of the articles. So for our one, we had 300 views of that image, which again is, is a good number. The interesting number is that 585 for that, for that, for that first one off campaign. We created quite a quite a compelling image and some quite compelling uh, text within that image. Again, posted up to LinkedIn, and we got 585 views of that image. Which, again, that's a high number. This is all based on work we've done with working with small companies. So this isn't the, these aren't kind of the numbers you'd get from a, a really big company. Um, you'd probably expect a lot more than that from the bigger companies, but these are small companies, so that number is high. 250 for the third for the second. Um, campaign, the one-off campaign, that was not not unsurprising, not unsurprising. So uh, again, we we realised that the not only the, the, the repetitive campaign that we were running, or the iterative campaign we were running, was getting interest from both the views and the images. So was the one-off campaign, um, the second, sorry, the first of the one-off campaigns with 1395. So we then another follow up, which we like to do. Video is much is really compelling. It's a, it's a really interesting new medium one people use. We generally like to put together very short videos, 30 seconds, 45 seconds with an image and then just text that appears on the image. There's lots of variations that one can do here, but these the themes here were very similar. We ran sort of somewhat similar video campaigns. Um, again, you're telling a story, you're getting people's attention to telling a story, the video itself and the text that comes up is helping to get people's attention. So again, looking through the numbers for our campaign, about 100 of what looks at the video. Again, a really high number for that first one-off campaign, 141, and then 120 for the second one-off campaign. So looking at those numbers, looking down, we were, we'd learned for the first set that this is probably, you know, we, we'd change things around in terms of how we were, were doing the marketing iteratively. Um, and we were pleased with the numbers, but what really surprised us was that first one-off campaign, uh, which we'd not learned anything. We were just taking a guess on what the title of it might be, and uh, and we were linking it up to a to a to a topic which we thought might be interesting. We got really high numbers from that one. The second one-off campaign, more like what we would have anticipated, you know, more more like what we would have expected since we didn't have any background. So next, the key numbers I'm going to show you now are the leads. So the CTAs in each of those articles, how many people clicked on the call to action and were prepared to share their email address because they were interested not only in the article, but what that CTA was pointing to. And but in all cases, it was a, a, a sort of a, a mini ebook. Um, so that, that was really what we were pointing to. So the magic, oh, actually before I go, I'm, I'm preceding it. One other thing, we looked at Google Analytics on the article itself where it's published. Significant traffic, 20 plus 25% for our article, um, the iterative one, plus 35%, another big number for that one-off campaign, and then plus 25 for the other one. So it, it drove significant um, web traffic, but here's the important number. Pause, pause for breath. Our campaign, the first one where we'd learned from, generated 44 leads, and that was in a few days. That was in like two days. 
that's from campaigns that we've run that was a good number we were really quite pleased that, that that was the level of interest. We'd found a sweet spot. We'd found that folks were interested in what we were talking about and they wanted to continue sort of to read more about what uh, that article is about. The surprising things was particularly that six. So given all of that, that, that first one off campaign with all those high numbers, only six folks were prepared to go further and share email addresses for the third, for the second um, one off campaign too. So, you know, really interesting numbers when you look at that. And I mean, you know, if you're really interested, take a look at that, take a look at that. And, and it was really interesting for us to learn, to see how iterative campaigns are so powerful, even when you've, you know you've got to, you've generated some, some high interest. So um, I'm just gonna go to the conclusion. So digital marketing is how you show your story. We really, really strongly believe in digital marketing but iterative is critical. When we look at those three campaigns, the iterative campaign was a one, and our goal was to generate leads, was a one that generated by far the most leads. With that first one-off campaign, we needed to go back and do that again, because we clearly were onto something there, but somehow we weren't getting people dri being driven towards um, what was being offered on the CTA. It may have been the, the CTA itself, it may have been the topic of the CTA, something wasn't working, but we were onto something there. So from a, from a success perspective, that was one that was worth exploring. And I think when it comes to iterative, the, the goal there is you measure, you learn, you repeat, you keep tweaking. So the goal of any successful digital marketing campaign is repetition. There's the killer one that we think we, we've discovered with this. We think that startups put a low priority to that. We think startups actually are not prepared to spend the money, and I'll be careful here, to actually do those repetitive type campaigns. I think they hire, I think, again, this is, this is my surmising of things. I don't have hard data for this, but th th there's many indications that the marketing world is low priority, um, sales, and, and um, the development world is much more important to these folks. Um, and yet we know that the, in a crowded marketplace where there, there are a few, the geospatial 2.0 world is, is ever more crowded with people with solutions and still we have to bring in the buyers. They're still cautious about buying because it's all new to them. So it makes digital marketing and content marketing super important. But we think in the startup world, they don't see the importance of, of that which is quite fascinating. Um, and we suspect that the winners in that space, wherever, whichever place that they're operating in, are gonna be the guys that actually put much higher priority into that messaging medium, into how they actually share what they do, sorry, the problem they're solving, how they're solving it, and the outcomes. You know, those three classic sort of value proposition elements. That's the power of digital marketing. If they're not, if you're not able to share that information, um, I suspect a lot of startups will actually struggle. So anyway, interesting data. I thought it worth sharing. That's the Friday talk for today. Thanks for watching.